Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, I wanted to go ahead and provide some more information, kind of continue on on the video that I provided last or that I created last around the concept of image-only designs. And I said very clearly that some instances, image-only designs could potentially be better than image plus text designs. And when you have an image with text design, it's best to have that text essentially contribute more information to the image so that it, speci it specifically fits in a more niche down approach, in a more specific niche. And there's a lot of different examples of this, right? And I wanted to actually give an example right here live. So here I have this design of a turtle, okay? And with this turtle, there are I have options. I have the option to put text around it, like for example, save the turtles. I could put something like this, which was text that I found in chat in chat GPT, which I should probably make a separate video on. Um, or I could just post it the way it is, the just straight up as an image. As a creator with 30 designs a day, you have to be able to discern which is the best opportunity for you. Now, you might be saying, well, can I upload all of them? The answer is absolutely. You can absolutely upload all of them. If that's what you want to do, you absolutely can. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive deeper for this specific example and think about what would be the pros, what would be the cons of doing just an image-only design. And let's kind of ascertain how we would be able to rank up the design if we choose to. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So the first thing I could do, let's use the Save the Turtles example. So let me go ahead and duplicate this. Let's create a quick design just by editing the text. So save the, let's get rid of this, and let's turn this into turtles. Okay. And real quick, let me just see here. This will turn into the word the. Let me fix this. Okay. We have the. Save the turtles right something like this it doesn't have to be fancy but something kind of like that right save the turtles let's go ahead and decrease this font and make sure it fits okay so just like that it fits right save the turtles so let's take this save the turtles uh text right here but before i do let me just improve this make this a little bit better i know i'm not necessarily posting it right now but this is just a live example all right, so I can take this design and let's go ahead and do a search for save the turtles. All right, so I'll type in here, save the turtles. Okay, and we see here immediately that there are 6,845 results. The first design clearly says save the turtles. And then also, in fact, this design was found in the turtles niche. So when I search for turtles, and you might be saying to me, well, obviously, it's in the turtle niche. Not obvious because, um, let me hold, go ahead and spell this correctly. Turtles. Okay. And let me make sure. Yep, it's spelled correctly here. The word turtles and the word save the turtles are two different niches, right? They're two different niches. They have different words. Okay. And I've said this before, but the niche of turtles is different than the niche of save the turtles. Now, save the turtles might potentially be a sub niche in turtles, but they're not the same thing, right? Somebody could be looking for a turtles design. That does not mean they're looking for a save the turtles design. Somebody could be looking for a save the turtles design and may potentially be looking for a turtles design. I want to make that very, very clear because when we study different keywords, we're studying them based on their niche, right? And each individual keyword, regardless of how similar it is to another, because it provides different results in the search engine, it is therefore different. We have to treat every keyword differently, all right? And we treat them as separate niches. We've been talking about this in the SEO course, the Redbubble SEO course. I'm just going to shout it out real quick so we can get on with the video here. But the Redbubble tag course, I'll leave the link in the description. It goes over SEO, tagging, keyword research, etc. for the design, right? So I have a few options. I can take the, the design of the turtle and post it here. Now, there's going to be a lot of work that I have to do behind the scenes to actually get it to rank. There's 87,000 designs. Let's talk about what some of that work 
might potentially be. So the first thing that I would do is after I would create my tags, upload my design, I would say, okay, let's just say my design is on page, God knows how much. Let's say, let's say it's on page 94, right? How am I going to be able to get it to page two, page five, page 10, or even page one? How do I do that? Well, the first thing that I'm going to have to do is I understand that I can't sit around and wait for sales. So I'm going to have to start manufacturing sales, right? How can I manufacture sales? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is use social media, all right? I'm going to use my bot tool, my Instagram bot tool, which a lot of people think Instagram bots mean fake followers. It's not. I have the ability to interact with other people who are looking for my designs. When I interact with them on Instagram, they finally know who I am. They would have not known about me otherwise. I interact with them. I get more sales. I get more follows on Instagram. Those follows, those likes, those comments, those people who are interested will click my link, see my products, and buy my products. One of those products being the turtle design, right? The solo turtle design without the text. That design is going to rank up with time, okay? Before I can get that sale, though, what I can do is I can max out its organic ranking. How do I do that? Well, I use the Redbubble Favor Automator tool. So you see this tool right here? This is called the Redbubble Favor Automator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to other niches outside of my store niche. So if my store has a niche, let's say it's all about animals or better yet, even all about turtles, right? I'm going to go to a separate niche that's not about turtles. Let's say I'll go to the faith niche and I'll interact and like all the different faith designs that are newest designs. So recently uploaded. And what will happen is, is when I get those favorites back, which I could do a series on that alone. But when I get those favorites back, what's going to happen is I'm going to get more ranking for my design. The favorites uh, button here was not a design for sellers. I mean, excuse me, it was not a feature within Redbubble for sellers. It's a feature for buyers, right? And buyers indicate to Redbubble what they like, what their favorite thing is. And I can almost guarantee you that this design has way more favorites than the design on the 40th page, right? And the reason why is not only because it gets more attention, but because slowly and gradually, it's been desired more, right? And <clears throat> I could also assume that this design had more attention over time than a design like this one, okay? Or even a design like this one. Why can I assume that? Well, I can assume that because it's at the top, Redbubble is not going to present a, a listing at the top unless it's had more traffic, more favorites, more sales, more likes. That's the wisest thing to do for the specific keyword that's searched. That's why if you notice here, I click most relevant, and these are the designs that are quote unquote most relevant to what I'm searching. So if I want to reverse engineer the algorithm, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to create sales on my platform, on my on my website, uh, not on my website, excuse me, on my profile on Redbubble. I'm also going to have to get more favorites. And all the sales that I do get, I'm going to have to hope that they go towards the specific turtle design, right? And what's going to happen is because by nature, this is just a turtle design, I'm going to have to be forced to use high competition keywords. Now, you might say, well, why would I do that? Well, because high competition keywords are typically short tail. We've spoken about this in our last video. A short tail keyword is, by definition, most of the time, we're talking 95% of the time, higher competition, right? <clears throat> when, the comp when the design is short tail, it's going to be more relevant from a keyword approach. I can create a design that's from a tag standpoint, not relevant, but have just as much sales as this one, but never show up on the first page. And the reason why is because the tags need to be relevant, which is we go very, very heavily that on that in the Redbubble course. But regardless, let's kind of go ahead and kind of continue. So once I do that, right, and I and I do all this work behind it, I've came from an outside approach moving inward, right? I'm creating the favorites, I'm creating the sales, right? And what that's doing is that it's inflating the value of my design and not in a fake kind of way, but in a very real way. It's getting sales, it's getting favorites. And then over time, it's going to start ranking higher and higher and higher. Once it gets to a certain point, 
it gets to the point where the market determines, meaning the red bubble market determines, does it stay on the first page or does it not? So if my design, let's just say, got up right here because I had a lot of sales. Let's just say I had a high sales day on Instagram. Maybe I had 16 sales. The day before I had 12 sales. The day before I had eight sales. The day before that I had maybe 13 sales. The day before that I had 10 sales and so on. They could be stickers. They could be shirts. They could be whatever product it is. I boosted up my favorites and naturally I'm getting higher ranking. At that point, there's going to be people on Red Bull that search for the word turtles. And when they see my design, my design could potentially break through what we call the invisible veil. And the invisible veil is the difference between you keep promoting the product versus now the organics behind Redbubble takes care of it for you, right? So if the design is good enough, and this is why every design matters and the quality of the design matters, and really it just depends on how people view your design, right? If the design is good enough for the marketplace, which I believe it could be, it potentially could be, right? I look at this design, I say it's good enough um, compared to what actually exists. You know, I'm not calling these designs ugly by any means, but with that being said, could it, could it rank? Maybe. And then if it gets enough sales, right, organically from the actual platform, I can now back away from that design. And then start focusing on promoting a different design or a different set of designs or even a different store on Instagram. Does that make sense? So I'm using Instagram as a fuel to that, as a fuel to that fire. Now, some people might ask me, what about Twitter? Why aren't you using Twitter for promotion? And the reason why you may be potentially asking is because bots and apps, which is the place where I get the uh, follow and follow Instagram bot, also has a Twitter bot. Now, Twitter is very, very, very useful for things like this, but it has to be somehow charged emotionally or politically in some sort of way. Meaning, this picture of a turtle, people see it on Twitter, it's not going to hit them as hard unless I create some sort of like, uh, some sort of politically associated charged message. Does that make sense? Um, things that are ha somewhat political or crypto based or. Um, governmental base or something like that something with a sort of that kind of theme works very well on Twitter like very very well in terms of sales and there's ways that you can edit your certain design so for example you go to American patriotism pages on Twitter you go to Donald Trump page on Twitter and you market your Twitter uh, American USA style designs works very very well right so there's certain places where you have to know how to market so for Twitter this design wouldn't work too well because it's more creative. It's not really politically charged, right? And so what happens is, is that would create sales, right? And Twitter works the same way. You promote the design, you, you get the sales, you start ranking higher, etc. So that's one way, right? So that's one avenue. What's the second avenue? Well, the second avenue is through search. And I'm actually going to leave this for the next video because I think this video is long enough, 13 minutes. So if you didn't see the first video, I highly recommend you see it. It's kind of like explaining the kind of process behind everything, okay? This video, we kind of went through how to get the sales and how to rank up organic, well, quote-unquote organically, but how to do it without focusing on the tags, right? Of course, the tags are part of the aspect, but you saw from an outside-in approach. In the next video... We're going to go from a search engine standpoint how you can make that happen. All right. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.